Hello everyone, welcome to Shelf Space. I'm your host, Ross13, and today we are reviewing the SD Gundam World Sengoku Soketsuden Chow Chow Wing Gundam. And once again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm also hoping that apparently my lights flickering doesn't show up on the camera. That's weird. Power fluctuations or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we take a look at the actual figure, let's take a quick look at the box. Okay, so to start out, we got a very cool illustration of the Chow Chow Cow Cow... I don't know. Uh, wing Gundam. Uh, wings splayed out and blades drawn, and it looks really cool. I love all the uh, little glowy translucent blue bits. It's also got an overall blue color to it, while the last couple ones we looked at, I believe, had a uh, green. Anyway, we got the logo for Gundam World over there. Gundam logo, blue Bandai logo, it says Cow Cow, Wing Gundam. Bunch of other little text. Bandai Spirits 2019, made in, Chi made in China. The symbol for, I guess, the country he's from. Uh, I don't know the story very well, mainly because there's only been like one episode that's been put out. At least in my region. On this side, we got the same illustration as the front. And the name and everything again. Gundaminfo.com. Gundam.info, sorry. Blue Bandai logo. On this side, we got a very nice painted shot of the Cow Cow Wing Gundam. Man, I really like these uh, blue bits. And it shows that this one comes with the Phoenix memory, whatever that means. Got the same illustration as the other side. And then this side is just white with the usual safety information. And yeah. So, let's take an actual look at the figure. And here he is, looking pretty darn cool, if a bit dark. His color scheme is very, very dark to start off with. And I'm not sure if I have my lights set up properly to really uh, film this guy. I've rearrange them a little bit so hopefully he you can actually see what he looks like on my end it looks like everything kind of turns into a black blob almost anyway uh despite that i think this guy actually looks really really cool he's got tons of this little techno greeble detail and it's a shame that it's on a lot of very dark colors like here on the black because you can barely see it. I'm going to need to hit this thing with some uh, weathering powder for like silver or something like that uh, to uh, make it stand out more, I think. Uh, maybe I'll show that off on another video or something. Anyway, let's do a quick rundown of its articulation and then we'll look at everything else. So the head is on the same sort of ball socket joint that allows for some movement but the big ears and stuff like that are going to collide with everything. And, but you do get a little bit of the turkey movement. Uh, he's got that butterfly joint that allows for a little bit of movement forward and the ball socket joint to allow things to rotate a bit. But again, he's got stuff sticking out all over the place, so it's going to collide with things. You have to keep that in mind and adjust things accordingly. Uh, no elbow joint, but he does have a ball socket joint inside the shoulder as well to give sort of the semblance of movement there. The fist is on a standard ball socket joint. Uh, this will keep it from rotating too much if you have the swords in the hand like I do. He's got a bit of an ab crunch, which, as I've said before, is really impressive for an SD Gundam kit. His legs... Might as well not have any articulation. If anything, it might have been better because this guy is very back heavy. And if I don't have the legs set just right, he falls over. Fortunately, I think he's kind of designed with the idea that he'd be floating on an um, action base. Which he, he and the others do have the plugs for that. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Uh, the wings are attached to the backpack via ball joint so you can rotate them around 
a little bit. There's no uh, jointing for like the feather bits or anything like that. So you can't like have the wings retract or anything like that. They're just always going to be splayed out. It does look cool though. Um, getting ahead of myself a little bit, but there is a, the little Phoenix memory thing inside his backpack there. You can take that out. I don't know if I can right now. There it goes. It's a tiny little plastic piece that will get lost very easily. So I'm just going to put that back in there and hope it doesn't go flying on me again. I'm not exactly sure what the story is on those on these things. Because um, again, we only have like the first episode and maybe some random comic stuff, but I haven't really delved too far into it. Okay, I can't get that thing to stay in now, so we're just going to set that aside for right now and hope I don't lose it. <laughs> Accessory-wise, he comes with two cool-looking swords that I think are supposed to, like, represent the uh, Twin Buster Rifles. And what you can also do, similar to the Twin Buster Rifle, is take them out of his hand and combine them together into a bigger sword. I said, combine them together into a bigger sword. There we go. Which looks really freaking cool. I dig this, but I like sword weapons. Yeah. Ooh, that's actually a good shot. Picture. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, um... He could use a little more detail work. Uh, and I think that's mainly just because the black plastic just absorbs light so much that you can't really see all this fun uh, technogribble detail on it. And there should be like blue on the back of his helmet and stuff like that, which I swear that looks like a face. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, so... Perhaps in comparison to the others, this one might be a little bit more disappointing, but I still think it's a really good figure, and I would recommend it if you're into uh, SD Gundams at all. So, yeah, not too much else to say about this guy. He's got some cool detail, but the uh, black plastic makes it hard to see, um, and he probably could use a little bit of extra TLC to really make him shine. So yeah, just realized I forgot to uh, do the uh, quick comparison. So here's all of them laid out. Here's the old school uh, Sangoku uh, line that they did. I say old school. They did it a few years back. Here's BB Senshi, Night Gundam, and it's Centaur mode. Winning Gundam from uh, Build Fighters Try. And a SD Strike Gundam from a depressingly long time ago. It's still really interesting to see all these together to kind of see how the concept of an SD Gundam has evolved. Oh, and here's this little dude for my last video. Just so you can get another idea of how tiny that guy is. <laughs> Maybe that guy will end up being like my version of Wally, -E, like on uh, Shoki Reviews. Uh, that's been a review. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Uh, check the description below for uh, links to my uh, uh, storefront where you can get official Shelf Space t-shirts and more. And yeah. So thank you again, and I'll see you the next time you invade my Shelf Space.